the Sport Cruiser. But if you get closer here, you see that this is Piper Sport. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at is a 2010 Sport Cruiser. The newer models for this airplane, they look very similar. It's similar airframe, but they've mostly changed the interior of the plane on the outside all these planes look exactly the same and funny story again you see here it says piper sport that's because this plane this guy right here is one of the first to do it when it comes to light sport aircraft so brief history here is a uh, vector i believe was the first to get into the u.s market given guys all of these planes are built out in the czech republic literally right next door to each other um, but they made their way into the u.s market first was the vector and then later came the sport cruiser and so much so that piper a well-known aircraft manufacturer here in the u.s decided to brand this airplane back in the 2000 and I would say between 2009 and 2010 was when you saw a lot of activity with this plane. And unfortunately, that relationship didn't work out so well. Uh, and Piper decided not to take on distributing this aircraft anymore. But I would say that the fact that they even decided to carry an international brand should say a lot about the build quality of this aircraft, which is really why you see it standing in front of you because we just bought this airplane and it's a great time builder it's also a great trainer okay i'll go in the interior and show you some of the goodies in there uh let me just let me open the the cabin for you um today is a quite cold winter day so give me a minute here we go i had it open before but what you're looking at guys is a well-equipped aircraft that can be used for all of the training you can think of from sport pilot to private pilot to instrument so these are dine on and I'll, I'll i'll go through a little bit of it but before i do that you can see the setup in here very similar to all the two seaters you see in the market these are nice and still has the beautiful leather seats this aircraft does come equipped with a parachute yeah these became standard long ago and this 2010 model still has it you have your rudder pedals there this is also a free caster nose gear so you have tow brakes which depend on which aircraft you're flying you get in and out of those i know i'm i've been used to both tow brakes and hand brakes and what's interesting or not too interesting about this aircraft is this for all light sport, you usually just have this one lever. The prop uh, is fixed, so you can adjust it while you're on the ground and then go fly. So you've got a prop lever. This is a uh, carbureted engine. So you got your choke there, fuel selector. Uh, you got a little cubby here, storage in there. And uh, again, your standard stick and rudder airplane. And for new pilots, Again, why we actually fly these planes is because we think, one, they're very fuel efficient and efficient to fly and maintain, also easy to fly, but also you get great uh, stick and rudder skills uh, with these lighter planes. So to go through what you're looking at, this is also glass avionics, but it's Dynon. And just about everything you see in your Garmin, you get also, this is actually a Garmin, this is your GPS track here you've got your radios this airplane comes equipped also with the autopilot all the nine yards you have it in here and actually let me see if i can get it on for you while i'm here let's turn the master and we'll turn the instrument on see what we got so when you turn that on this is your uh your engine gauge it's, it's a little darker out today but you can probably see that on when I turn the avionics on, you see these two guys come on. This is your EFIS. And this, you can basically view your flight instrument here. Okay. And then this guy gives you your map, GPS, all that good stuff. 
you see your radios also come on autopilot is on so this is a very well equipped aircraft as you can see and not only can you use it as a personal plane let me go ahead and turn these off before i eat up my batteries uh, but it's also great as a trainer and something you notice actually while we're here you see this says using backup power so this if this also can be a backup instrument just like you have your garmin g5 so i think this is very nicely equipped and you've got your backup analogs here um, just in case right now you have parking brake on this is your parking brake here your flap switch is there and also if you've been coming along for all the uh, airplane reviews now it's junky back here you see that you have a lot of room back here this is very common for light sport category now let me step out and share some numbers with you okay like i said this thing is fully equipped just like you would see in your brand new airplanes you have all of what you need in this smaller airplane too or older airplane because again 2010 so this aircraft is essentially 14 years old but it still flies and competes with every new thing you can find in the market today so here you have a Rotax ULS engine and this is a hundred horsepower it's a 912 uh, again it's carbureted um, so this is not your fuel injected but maintenance is very it's very similar your 50 hours 100 hours annual you spend about uh, same but make sure you get a road tax uh, uh, engineer or a road tax mechanic because that's what we're finding out uh, because we run road tax all of our planes are road tax engines and one thing I will mention because I want to I want to give whoever is looking at this airplane some some uh, proper information so that way if you ever get into one of these you know what to look out for okay the biggest thing or the biggest flaw for this aircraft is this and I'll tell you why so if you're looking at this plane there's a bulletin out for you to cut into the cowling to allow more airflow these early model sport cruisers are well known notorious for overheating when they're on the ground so if you're taxing along or you're holding short for too long that engine is going to run hot and one of the the reasons why is because of the flaw in the cowling cover here so the original design the holes are smaller now if you look at this initially the vent here stopped right here but you see we've cut into it and this is directly from sport cruiser there's a bulletin out so if you have one of these or you're looking at getting one of these aircraft you want to do this and this will allow a lot more airflow okay into your engine and your oil as well so because this is what cools the oil you have one here and you have another one here and although this airplane is also uh it's both liquid and and air cooled but again on the ground you might run into some trouble if you're saying flying out at, out of a busy airport so that's something to keep in mind but that modification has already been done on this airplane and so i want to advise anyone who's looking at one of these to make sure you do that so you save yourself a lot of headache but a beautiful thing is once you get up in the air the plane just flies beautifully smooth all right and in terms of performance what you're looking at is 100 to 105 110 knots in cruise you're burning four gallons of fuel per hour and again you have a parachute on board of this airplane uh, it's well equipped your fuel capacity let's see you can see here 15 gallons so 15 gallons in each tank and what's beautiful about a road tax powered airplane is you can put car gas so av gas or mo gas can go in this at our flight school look up flight academy we use both and this helps stay efficient saves a lot of money if you are a private owner and you have access to mo gas man you would save yourself quite a bit also depending on how many times you fly each year but guys this is your 
Piper Sport slash Sport Cruiser. It's not a Piper Sport anymore. It's just a Sport Cruiser. The newer models of this airplane, uh, they've taken care of the cowling design so you get better airflow. Also, from my understanding, you're probably going to have newer engine options in the future, but for the most part, the last decade, you just have the 912 uh, in these planes. And then last thing I would say is also your instrumentation. Again, this is already well equipped, but the newer models of this airplane, you will get the this newer sky view and the Dynon. Sport Cruiser only carry Dynon avionics but they run just as beautifully as the Garmin. I, I'm a Garmin guy. I've flown a lot of hours in the Garmin and I've also flown some hours in the Dynon. I can tell you there's not much difference, uh, especially from a training standpoint. If you're a student, you wanna get into a modern airplane, this is it right here. And as I said, we are going to be flying this. I'm super excited at our flight school. If you're looking to get your pilot's license, or want to become a career pilot make sure you check us out lookupflightschool.com we're opening our new location in atlanta georgia right now we're based out in winston-salem north carolina i hope you enjoy this video if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions about the sport cruiser leave in the comments below i'll check in i promise all right take care again my name is mike and i will catch you on the next video